Welcome back to another episode of I Never Liked You with Mateo Lane and Nick Smith. It's a 15-minute podcast. We discuss one topic, and today we're talking about going out. Nick? You have the longest arms on the face of the planet. Long and... Okay. So... This is what I would wear if I was going out and have worn something similar. Are you going out to dinner with the Adams family? (laughs) No, I always say when I go out, I look like uh, Maggie Smith dressed me from the Downton Abbey. Yeah, yeah. You look like you're you're, somewhere in between Downton Abbey and Saturday Night Fever. In fact, we went to a club and I was wearing basically the same outfit, blouse, pants, while a go-go dancer in moccasins got fully naked on a table this far away from us. (laughs) You were dressed like Barbara Streisand's The Third Album. Exactly. That's what I was going for. So going out, this is something we do not do. Now, before you and I were friends, which was a happier time in my life. Same. Um, Fond memories. Me and uh, Patty and Taylor would go out every single night, every night. But we were they, they don't drink, and I don't drink either. We go out to see Monet and Bob do drag shows. So first we go see Bob. So it was like Barracuda, or we go wherever, right? And we go see The Help, which is a show that Bob ran with Pixie forever. And then Bob made it to Drag Race, went away, and uh, Monet was rising up. So Monet was performing every single night before Monet went on Drag Race. So every single night, no matter where Monet was performing, <laughs> me, Taylor, and Patty would go. Oh God. And, we would and those go shows out. are late. Yeah. But we would be out and work nine to five, so I guess that's fine. Yeah, I would, pro- I would probably finish shows around 10, and, you know, drag shows start at, like, 1. And then we would end up at a diner called The Flame on, like, 56th Street and 8th Avenue. And we would, <laughs> we would have mozzarella sticks. Couple of flamers at The Flame. <laughs> we all kept complaining about, like, why do we have so much back knee? Oh, we're drinking Red Bull and eating mozzarella sticks till 5 o'clock in the morning. But And what's your excuse now? Uh, just poor living. Um, like, not taking care of myself, lots of drugs. But um, we don't go out as a group. No, well, it's because half of them moved to L.A. But even when they were here, we wouldn't go out. Yeah, well. Do you feel, because a lot of gays go out. I was never, look, I've never drank in my life. I've like had a shot for people's 21st birthdays, but I've never had like a full drink in my life. So you've never been drunk? Never been drunk. I have no desire to. I don't like loud music. I don't like crowds. I don't like late hours. Are you that maid in Mrs. Doubtfire? I don't do laundry. I don't do cleaning. I don't do sewing. I don't do vacuuming. I don't do... Yes, also a vampire. <laughs> um, actually, no, that doesn't make sense because vampires how come you ne- like, at night. You never drank. I never drank. I never went out. So like my 20s, which is when I think most people are like, that's when they're sort of or if you're from getting Chicago, it in and doing you everything. Start when you're 14. Right. That was just never my thing. And I always said, oh, I can't wait until I'm in my 30s. That'll be more my time because people stop going out as much and everything, which is true. I'm now in my 30s. We never really go out. If we do, it's to dinner and we go to the early bird special. <laughs> <laughs> we go to Denny's. But everyone I'm saying is like everyone our age goes out. And have you ever felt like, like- I'm missing out? Yeah. Not particularly because it just doesn't look appealing to me. I mean, to each their own. Some people love it, and that's good on you. That's just never been my thing. It is fun. I mean, I'd rather hang out at Bob's and watch YouTube videos, or hang out at home and play Fortnite, or go to dinner and be home by seven. (laughs) I mean, I will say our whole group are late night performers. And so I think once you're performing at late night, you stop seeking a nightlife like going out like that catharsis you know what i mean it's also gotten to the point where like especially when i was introduced to the group bob had just won drag race monet was becoming more popular and how becoming more popular so like it's just hard to go out with people who are more known in the gay world because (laughs) You just can't enjoy it. You look like Maleficent (laughs) talking to me, trying to make a serious point. And you're like, before the sun sets on her 16th birthday, she shall prick her finger on the spindle of a spinning wheel. They're kind of like lampshades. So you're Lumiere. Um, How did you meet Bob? Um, Through Grindr. (laughs) And we ended up spending the entire night watching Golden Buzzer moments from... Uh, America's Got Talent and okay. Britain's Got Talent. Okay. and Was the, Susan Boyle on that? Probably. Yeah. And The Voice Kids Philippines. Excuse me? You heard me. We literally spent the entire... I remember 
I didn't even get home until like four in the morning because we were watching endless videos. And after that, we both were just like, yeah, this seems about right that we should be friends. I remember Bob calling us like he picked up an orphan, like a gay orphan who's in his 20s. And he was like, <laughs> he basically did. Look, there's this guy we've been hanging out. He doesn't have any gay friends. Can he just hang around us? And I was like, OK, sure. And I met Nick on Bob's old leather couch remember that leather couch that was in well, his it wasn't old he had just got it and nick's just sitting there like that and somehow we brought it that you sang well, opera right bob brought it up because he knew you sang opera and i sang opera so he was like oh this is going to be something they can bond over and in true us fashion immediately started arguing because <laughs> you liked maria callas and i don't yeah you like sarah brightman you okay, like, let's you not like, get crazy. You like, you, not only do you love the Olive Garden for your cuisine, you love the Olive Garden in the singing world as well. You love like a, a, a 60 year old uh, white lady. You like, I mean, I feel like your version of opera is just so like Julie Andrews. You know what I mean? Like the, the whitest voice. So you're saying you don't like Julie Andrews singing? On record, I want you to look at that camera and say you don't like Julie Andrews singing. I'm just trying to think of like the like the most like what's the most um, like uh, Victorian way of singing, and you like that. I mean, I, I like all different kinds of singing, but I just didn't. I'm not a huge fan of Maria Callas. So the first time we met, we just argued over that. But why don't you like Maria? Because Maria is. I full think of she's an amazing actress. I think what she can do with her voice is amazing. Right. I just don't particularly, I like a pretty sound and she doesn't have a pretty voice. <laughs> I prefer prettier voices. I don't disagree that she has a, I mean, she. I mean, it depends on how you define pretty, I guess, but she does, I mean, she is. For me. Yeah. It, it's not pretty. I just think that like, your singing is very like, <laughs> I don't know. Just like, just like so by the books in a way. I don't know. You want a Christmas tree in sound. I love Christmas trees. <laughs> you do. You do. Um, I feel like this is what Maria would wear if we were like, hey, we're going to industry tonight. She'd pop this. You think Maria on. Callas would dress up like B. Arthur and the Golden Girls? Yes. And you don't think she was going out with her friends in Italy? Uh, I don't know. She was hanging out with Meneghini, her old husband, and then she was hanging out with Onassis on a boat. So I don't think that she was. Okay, so. She would she would go to parties. I mean, that was sort of like the, I think the downfall of her is like she, of her voice at least, where, cause she was like always partying, going to like events rather than like focusing on the voice. Right. So she would have gone out. She's probably been out more than you and I have. Have you Certainly been to, me. Have you ever been to a circuit party ever? No. God. Well, no. But for Halloween, we did go to a warehouse party, and that was the first one I had ever been where? to. Where? In Brooklyn, remember for Halloween we dressed up as Pokemon. Oh my God! Yeah, but that's not a circuit party. That was no, all I said it's people. not a circuit party. It was a warehouse party. So I've never been to a circuit party. I don't think it would be for me. I forgot Could that you we did even that. imagine me there. I think, no, no. So this warehouse party, we had fun, but like at a certain point, I well, was like, we. I gotta go. Right, because it was very like it was predominantly straight, which I which don't is like. fine. It, I liked the mix. It was fun to see everyone's costumes, but they had the gay room. But it was funny because in the gay room, the lights were so bright, and you know it's because they were like these queens are going to be blowing each other on the dance floor, we don't and want they were no fucking. I watched it. It was happening, and I was like, I think I gotta go home. Yeah, like it's not that much. So fun. that was the first like big party I've ever been to. Do I need to do it again? No. Did I have fun? We ran into Miss Cracker. And I ran into a girl. I was her RA in college. How did you even notice in costume? She wasn't in costume. She was one of the bartenders. Oh, okay. So she gave us free drinks because of that. Well, the one time we went out for Patty's birthday at Club Q, RIP, um, we had a good time, I thought. But not RIP because I'm pretty sure they were racist. Oh, really? I don't know anything about That's it. That's why they closed. Oh, well, then fuck them. Right. But the one time that we Allegedly. Did, the, one time, <laughs> the one time that we did go, it was funny because Nick is 6'4", so I don't think you're used to seeing people taller than you. It weirds me out. I'm, I usually look down at people, and I also physically look down I was at just people. I joke <laughs> in my mouth. But then it was funny because we're standing there, so everyone's heads are around here, and Nick's up there like a giraffe, and then someone taller than Nick walks by, and Nick goes like this. I go... What is it, Nick? He goes, who the fuck left Frankenstein in here? It's alarming to see like a six foot eight guy walk in when you're six four. I mean, hardly ever am I like. 
And then the top of my head, I was all of a sudden self-conscious about because I normally don't have to think about it. I said Nick's so tall and Dakota, his boyfriend, is so much shorter that when they're holding hands and walking, it looks like Nick is taking his older gay son to school. That's what Chelsea commented on one of our Instagram posts. Is this she your did. son? What did she? <laughs> there is a height difference there. Um, but there's a height difference everywhere. Actually, in our friend group, Bob and Alfredo and I are tall, and the rest of you are short. Are short. And me, Monet's Jacob, and Patty. She'd like Monet's to think- taller than me for sure. So Monet is on your guys' side. Uh, well, it's like Monet. She's in the middle. Monet, Bob, middle. Alfredo, Taylor. Taylor's all tall. skyscrapers. And then there's me, Jacob, Kennedy, Patty, Mitch. Mitch. You're all shorties. Jacob's the shortest. Is Jacob the shortest? I think Patty's the shortest. Oh, Patty might be the shortest. Five, five? Yeah. Five, six? Something like that. Something I don't know. Like we'll that. measure him next time. I'm five, nine. I am. According to who? My doctor. Did you pay that doctor? <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. I don't think that's right. Um, yeah, we're not like a going out group. Our idea of going out is like watching sitting on YouTube. Bob's couch, watching YouTube, or playing Smash, ordering Domino's. So we're like 13-year-old kids in the 90s at a sleepover. Yes, we've never aged out of ordering that. Ordering Domino's and playing video games till 4 o'clock in the morning till our parents tell us to shut up and go to bed. Yeah. It just, it doesn't. Again, to each their own. I know some people love it, but it's just not my thing. Like super loud music, bass really makes me physically nauseous. If Can it's I? Too much. Well, so does a pigeon flying by you. I mean, you're like a so frail does a gust deer. of wind. But I do think like I understand the appeal. Like it is really fun, and a lot of people who are you know work really hard during the week. You know, it's a catharsis. <clears throat> you go out with your friends. It's a different environment. You meet people. Like I, to- especially I, if you have a nine to five. Yeah, I, I mean, look, I used to go out when I was in my twenties in Chicago all the time. I was at Roscoe's. I was at Hydrate, Sidetrack. What uh, did going out in Chicago in the nineteen seventies look like? Way <laughs> you will. I mean, I just I was because I don't really drink anymore. But I mean, Chicago drinks. That's a drinking city. You'd start Thursday. Any city is a drink. No, no, no. Really. Chicago is a drinking city. I mean, really, you. Would, I remember. We would drink on Thursday nights, go out. Then on Friday nights, we would get we would pregame at my friend John's house and get wasted. Then go out. Then get even more wasted. Crash at home after eating like pasta or McDonald's or something. Wake up because you're in twenties. You recover and you do the same goddamn thing the next night. And then you do it Sunday during the day. You drink during the day. It's just everywhere you went. It was That's drinking. Too much. Yeah. I do remember like when I was 23 and I started doing stand up, like it hit me and I was like, I'm over. Like it was literally a day. I was like, no more. Well, I think once people start working in nightlife, they're like, it's like behind the curtain. And then all of a sudden they're like, man, I've lost interest. Yeah. Except with me, I loved Pizza Hut. I started working at Pizza Hut and it just made me love it more. <laughs> <laughs> you are truly trash. Trash. To the soul. To the, someone was talking oh, on New Year's at uh, Rodrigo's. There was a girl there, and she was like, oh, my God, where is your friend from in Pennsylvania? I was like, I don't know, somewhere outside of Scranton. And she was like, oh, so beautiful. And I was like, if I showed you this drone video, I don't know. if you would It be. is pretty. It's very, like, tree, like, during the fall time. But, I mean, it is. We're, I'm just straight trash. <laughs> but that's fine. Everyone's a little trash in their own way. But you would think I would enjoy going out because like you said, most people I grew up with started drinking and going out when they were like 14. I started having my first, the first cigarette I ever had was my sister's ex-boyfriend, Nick, and I was 13. And then the first... You had a cigarette at 13? Mm-hmm. And then the first... I remember I rolled up a piece of paper and just lit it on fire and I thought that was smoking and I was like... I can't believe I smoked. And my mom's like, you're a fucking idiot. (laughs) But in the background, while you're holding it, you just hear, Corella de Ville, Corella de Ville. I still do that, actually. Uh, And then I drank my first drink. It was Crown Royal. My friend. I don't even know what that is. Yeah, my friend, uh, uh, the triplets. What were their names? I forget. They stole it from their dad. And then my friend Tristan, we would, his dad was like, in his early hundreds. So we just stole all of his alcohol. And then my friend Pat would drive and we would just drink. I couldn't alcohol. even be a bartender. I don't know what half that. Could you imagine me at Friday night at a bar <laughs> slinging drinks for people? They'd be like, hi, can I have, I mean, literally any drink. And I'd be like, what? <laughs> well, you work and you get trained, Nick. I they would still you. not. I would, I would literally once, have no idea. Once, his oh my what? God, 20, his what? 
That's um, what would be. I, okay, my God, 18 seconds. One time I was dating this guy who was a bartender, and uh, he asked me if I wanted to like do like a private party and bartend, and I just made everyone a vodka soda no matter what they asked. Cranberry vodka soda, that was all they got. But did I didn't they get have to more make anything. vodka or more soda? My mom had to teach me how to cut limes. I don't know how to. How to make You're an drinks. embarrassment. Stop it. <laughs> Thank you for listening and watching another episode of I Never Liked You. And until next time. And subscribe. Subscribe.